And now I know previously you've been told whether or not your cuticle is raised, whether or not it's closed, whether it's in the middle, that determines what your hair's porosity is, but that is wrong. Black people's cuticles are more like this and have an irregular pattern and have lots of gaps in, this is gonna increase your hair's porosity. Hey there guys, it is Natural and the Dean here and I'm back with another video, another hair porosity video actually. Like guys, excuse the state of my hair. I feel like this is like a regular occurrence now, me just coming on here with my hair just looking like anyhow. Let me just make myself more presentable. You know what, I've gotten so comfortable just coming on here like anyhow I get my haters are watching my videos okay so they want to see me looking ugly but couldn't be me still you know what i've realized sometimes i do have like negative ways of speaking on my hair just because it's not like slicked back and my edges aren't laid because realistically my hair's not dirty it's not you know what i mean it's actually quite fresh it looks very healthy i don't know why i'm sat here you know you know what? my hair looks great my hair's amazing my hair is gorgeous the texture adds to everything okay it'll be another video on hair porosity i feel like i promise this might be the last one i'm going to be telling you guys exactly what is hair porosity how is hair porosity you know made not made what determines your hair's porosity and all of that jazz so without me rambling on let's get into the video so the definition of your hair's porosity is your hair's ability to accept and retain moisture we know that we all know that you know that right because i definitely know that however what affects our hair's ability to accept and retain moisture now i know previously you've been told whether or not your cuticle is raised whether or not it's closed whether it's in the middle that determines what your hair's porosity is but that is wrong i'm lying i'm lying it's definitely right but that is one of about five different parameters that determine your hair's porosity and actually it's probably the least important factor because it can be manipulated. The other things that determine your hair's porosity can't be manipulated. You can't change them about yourself. And this is obviously speaking about virgin hair. If you've obviously got dyed, can it be treated, whatnot, all those things increase your hair's porosity. So there's that. So these are the parameters that determine your hair's porosity. Number one, cuticle thickness. Number two, cuticular pattern. Number three, number of cuticle layers present. Number four, position of your hair cuticle. Okay, let's go step by step, one by one. This is gonna be quite, it's not gonna be that sciencey, but it's just gonna explain a lot more in depth what hair porosity is, just for your understanding, right? So the first thing that I mentioned was cuticle thickness. Now this is literally the thickness of each individual cuticle cell on your hair. Like literally the individual scale, we know that cuticles form a scale like pattern this is the thickness of each individual cuticle and that is measured by the inner layer and the outer layer they call it the endocuticle and the exocuticle this is how they measure the cuticle thickness this determines your hair porosity because it determines the distance in which a product or a treatment or a dye or whatever it is needs to penetrate into your hair. Let's imagine what your singular cuticle is this thick. Now if your cuticle was this thick, you would have more resistance to products than if your cuticle was this thick. There's this much thick. Think of it as like insulation. The thicker your insulation is, the harder it is for heat to get in and for heat to get out. The next parameter that I mentioned that determines your hair's porosity is your cuticular pattern. Now Everybody knows that cuticles are formed in scale-like cells. How those scales are formed together contributes to your hair's porosity. Now, if your cuticles have a regular pattern and they're very pa packed together, let's imagine they're like this, you're gonna have quite a lot of resistance because your cuticles are tight up, they're packed, they're right close together. If your cuticles are like this, which I mentioned in my previous videos, black people's cuticles are more like this, and have an irregular pattern and have lots of gaps in, this is gonna increase your hair's porosity because there's lots of gaps for places and 
for products, for dyes, for treatments to penetrate your hair. The thing that affects your hair's porosity is the number of cuticle layers. So obviously you've got your cuticular thickness, you've got your cuticular pattern, and then you've got however many of those layers you have. Now, you don't just have one layer of cuticles. Now, Africans tend to have three layers of cuticles, Asians tend to have eight layers of cuticles, it's a lot of cuticles to get through. And this also determines your hair's porosity. If you have three layers of cuticle, then your hair's gonna be a lot easier for products to penetrate than if you had eight layers of cuticle, because there's less resistance. There's less layers, there's less cuticle. And like I mentioned before, black people have three layers, which is exactly what increases our hair's porosity. And then the final parameter, which seems to be the one everybody loves and everybody talks about, is whether or not your cuticle's natural position is raised or closed and sealed tight shut. Now, I just want to mention as well, guys, in order for you to see your hair cuticles like position, you need extremely high tech equipment. I've heard of like labs doing like hair analysis to determine your hair's porosity, like unless they are using literally like state of the art equipment, they're not going to be able to tell you anything interesting about your hair, okay? And that's a bold statement, but I'll stand by it. Now, black people have naturally raised cuticles, so naturally our cuticles sit a bit like this. They sit irregular, they sit a bit raised, where if your cuticles are like this, obviously it's going to be a lot more difficult for products to penetrate. And that's the one that everybody kind of knows, raised cuticles, closed cuticles. So I'm not really going to talk too much about that. Now, cuti cuticle thickness number of cuticle layers, cuticular pattern, are all genetic parameters, parameters that you can't affect. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Whether or not your cuticles are open and closed, you can manipulate that. You can actually manipulate that. You can manipulate that with heat, temporarily. You can manipulate that with pH. You can manipulate that with product. The only thing that we can physically manipulate about our hair's porosity is whether or not our cuticles are open or closed. And I'm gonna do a quick debrief. I talk it in more in depth in my video about how black people can't have and don't have low porosity hair. This is what an African hair cuticle looks like. As you can see, three layers, gaps, irregular patterns, all sorts. I literally forgot to mention one other parameter that determines it. I kind of mentioned it, but I kind of didn't and that's cuticular surface adhesion. Now this is a very in-depth, you probably don't ever need to know this and you'll never need to know your cuticle surface adhesion, but like I mentioned before, your cuticles have layers. How well those layers stick together also determines your hair porosity. Imagine if it's like this, right? Your hair's porosity is gonna be, there's no gaps. Your hair's porosity is gonna be very, very low. Now imagine your cuticular adhesion has some little gaps here, this is now gonna increase your hair's porosity. Lots of space for products, treatments, dyes to penetrate your hair. So there's also cuticular layer adhesion, which is also another parameter that determines our hair's porosity. Sorry, I had completely forgotten that. All of this you can literally see in the, the research paper. I think I'm gonna attach the research paper and show you guys, obviously, snippets of um, the proof of this and the scientific evidence, the research that anthropologists have done into this. So um, I'm probably gonna show that so you guys can see it a little bit better and get a bit more of a better explanation, but there's that. Now, now that we know exactly what affects our porosity, this is exactly why I say that black people can't and don't have low porosity hair, because we have not many layers of cuticles. Our cuticle, lay our cuticle thickness is extremely thin. We also have not that great adhesion between the layers of our cuticles, meaning there's gaps. We have an irregular cuticle pattern, which meaning there's gaps within our cuticular pattern. And then on top of that, our cuticles are naturally raised. And I know that, now obviously porosity is a spectrum. You can have lower, you have people that will have lower porosity hair and people that will have higher porosity hair. But the bottom line is that black people have high porosity hair because we don't retain moisture well. That is that is the biggest giveaway of the fact that we have high porosity hair, the fact that we can moisturize our hair and then a few weeks, a few days later, whether it be a week later, whether it be two weeks later, your hair gets 
dry. Your hair is not retaining that moisture. That moisture is finding gaps, it's finding holes, it's finding, and that's exactly why we've got to start finding ways to seal our hair cuticle, to build our cuticle structure. And a lot of people think that our hair is dry because the oil doesn't make it to the ends of our hair. Let it be known, guys. The sebum that our hair produces is not a moisturizer. The sebum we produce is to coat the hair strand to protect it. It's just like adding an oil onto your hair. You don't apply oil onto your hair and say it's moisturized. No, no. Oil is a sealant, it's a protectant. That's the purpose of the sebum in our hair. So yes, it doesn't make it to the end. And that's also another reason why we can't retain as much moisture because that coating keeps moisture locked it. I feel like I've rambled on, I feel like I've gone on tangents, I don't even know anymore what I'm talking about. But yeah, so guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!